Uh, welcome back to our weekly webinar, to the Tuesday Live Weekly Webinar. Um, of course, we thank you guys for attending. Um, we're going to start off with uh, Darren from American Amicable this morning. Um, he's going to go into some of their basic final expense stuff. Um, so very excited about some of their uh, things that they're bringing to the table. Um, just give you a better outlook on some of their products and kind of what they have to offer. Um, obviously, you guys probably remember Darren from two webinars ago, I believe it was. Am I correct? Yeah, two mm -hmm. webinars ago. That's right. So he's back with us to kind of, he talked about the term side before. Uh, so now he's going to talk about the final expense side. Uh, so again, you guys, this is going to be really important for us to be able to cross sell during AEP. Um, and obviously outside of AEP or before AEP, all that good stuff, you're going to have all the information you need. Uh, but the big thing now is, like I said, again, we're in the open enrollment period. So it's very important for us to look at the uh, cross selling ability of a lot of uh, these products they bring to us. So uh, without further ado, um, I'll turn it over to Darren and uh, he'll jump right into it. So again, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, go ahead and put those in the chat. We'll answer those throughout the webinar. And of course, uh, we'll touch bases with you guys uh, afterwards. So again, thank you for attending. And uh, Darren from American Amicable is going to take it over from here. All right. Thank you, Brent. Uh, hello to everybody. Uh, yeah, it's a great pleasure today to get to talk to you guys about what actually is our most uh, popular uh, product here at American Amicable, which is our final expense. Um, just a little bit about uh, American Amicable for those who may not know uh, or be familiar with us. Um, we were founded in 1910, so a 100 plus year old company, uh, originally founded and still uh, located in, in Waco, Texas. Uh, our AM best rating is, is A, excellent. And we've been in this uh, simplified issue uh, final expense market space since, actually it's going on about 20 years now. So uh, definitely not our first rodeo when it comes to dealing with clientels in this market. Uh, and, and, you know, employees that have been doing their job a long time, which uh, every time I bring that up, I like to mention that it's it's not so much what they know, but they know why they're doing it, which is to take care of our agent partners, certainly our policyholders as well. But, you know, nothing happens unless agents are selling and that's <laughs> uh, and keeping them happy. So that's a that's a lesson they learn very early on. Uh, our final expense product uh, we're covering today is called the Senior Choice. Uh, just a high level overview here. It's for clients age 50 to 85 with a minimum face amount of 2,500. We have three different death benefit plans they might be able to qualify for based upon their, their health situation. And we'll go into each of those in more depth in a moment. Uh, but we go up to um, $50,000 uh, on the immediate plan. We do have several riders. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about them as well, including that grandchild rider, rider which really is, is attractive and helps generate a lot of additional sales, along with a couple of no cost benefits. So I know it's a very busy slide here, but, but essentially, again, reminding it's 50 to 85 are the ages with a minimum of 2,500. We have the three plans, um, the immediate, uh, that's our terminology. Um, this is the more traditional death benefit that we're all accustomed to. You know, after the policy is issued, whenever the insured passes away, the full death benefit is paid out. So there's no limitation at all, whatever. So if they have a $50,000 policy, they pass away, we're paying out the full 50. Those are the healthiest of individuals that are applying for, for final expense. If they're not eligible for the immediate, kind of the next step down, if you will, is what we call our graded plan. The way it works is if death occurs during the first policy year, we'll pay out 30% of whatever the face amount is. So a $10,000 policy would pay out 3,000 if they pass away in year one. In year two, if they pass away, that becomes a 70% payout. And then right after they get past the second year, anytime after that, it's a 100% face amount payout. Then lastly, we have return of premium. Some companies refer to it as a modified plan, but essentially the, if the client dies in the very uh, first couple of years after the policy is issued, we're going to pay to the beneficiary the premiums that have been collected in plus 10% interest. So if, if they're 50 to 64 when they buy this product, it's a three year window. If they die in that three year, it's premiums plus 10% interest. 
If they're 65 or older, it, it's a two-year window. If they die, it's premiums paid plus 10% interest. And, and for those of you who may not be familiar with, with final expense, I know sometimes this return of premium benefit doesn't sound like a lot. But reminder, this are, you know, these are individuals that do have some significant health is issues. And a lot of times they're, they're just lucky to get any coverage at all. And it's a no-lose situation because at worst case scenario, they get all the money back plus plus 10% interest. And if you live past that two or three you win two or three year window, it becomes a full death benefit payout. Now, one little footnote here. When I've been talking about death to this point, I've really been referring uh, to death because of natural causes that those limitations would apply if they die as a result of an accident. So they're walking down the street, you know, piano falls on them, something like that. Uh, then we have a full death benefit payout no matter how soon after the policy is issued and whether or not they have that graded or return or premium plan. And at the end of the day, most final expense companies have variations of this. They're very, very similar. So it's just slight tweaks between one company to the next. That's the base policy. Uh, I mentioned the grandchild rider earlier. Um, let me take a few moments here. Um, what it is at its core is it provides term insurance that covers the grandkids through their age 20. And you can purchase it in one unit, which is $5,000 of coverage, or two units, which is 10,000. And I realize that most people don't like to think about the potential death of a, of a grandchild. Certainly not a great thing to be thinking about, but at the end of the day, when that does happen, and, and unfortunately it does, those funerals can be just as expensive as adult funerals, and someone's got to pay for them, including you know the parents of the kid and a lot of times the grandparents as well are asked to chip in. So having this benefit there uh, can be very beneficial. Uh, you can – I'm going to skip ahead to the conversion privilege because uh, you, know, you may not be able to pass along a huge financial legacy to your grandkids. But you can pass along and affect an insurance legacy through this rider because of the conversion privilege. Because now those grandkids have the option to convert. They can do a $25,000 policy if they have the $5,000 of term coverage or a $50,000 policy if they have the, the $10,000 term coverage. The key thing here is that's without any, uh, any underwriting, guaranteed insurability. So, if they are diagnosed with an uninsurable condition at an early age, that will not matter. Their life insurance can still be provided through us through that conversion privilege. So again, not a huge financial legacy maybe, but it is taking care of their future insurance needs. A third piece to this is a paid up provision. If they happen to if the insure, let's just uh, go with an example. Um, the grandparent is, is – um, when they buy the policy, the, the grand, they're 50 years old. Um, five years later, they, they pass away. Um, the grandkid is still covered under this rider uh, through their age 20. Who's, who's paying for that rider premium at that point? Well, that would become American Amicable. So we would pick up the rider premium until the grandchild reaches age 20. And then, as I said earlier, they could take advantage of that conversion privilege. So a really a pretty robust benefit uh, and, and if you think about it you know what's more important to the seniors than their grandkids and being able to do something to benefit them directly is very important to them uh, you know if you just simply put it do you want to do something to help your grandkids out I mean most you know nine nine times out of hundred they're gonna say yes you know tell me what I can do so this writer allows for that there's no limit to the number of grandchildren that can be covered so you can do one, two, ten, you know, fifteen grandkids covered under one policy, no problem. Very inexpensive. Essentially, it's a dollar a month per grandchild if you go the five thousand dollar option, or two dollars a month if you go the ten thousand dollar option. So it helps make additional sales because they want to do something to help those grandkids out. But also, if they buy this policy. It's much harder for some agent to come behind you and replace this because not every company has this benefit and they and they 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 don't want to lose out on this nice benefit for their grandkids. So it, it helps make more sales and keeps more policies on the books. Some other riders uh, real quickly, 
there's a nursing home waiver premium. If they're confined to a nursing home, uh, then we'll waive their premium payments for them. Uh, accidental death, your traditional uh, ADB rider, uh, that provides some additional coverage in the event uh, the death is an accidental death. Those riders are optional and for an additional charge. There's two no-cost benefits that are included. First of those being terminal illness. And basically every final expense company has one of has this rider. Uh, really the essential difference is that percentage that can be collected. With us, it's 100% of the death benefit can be collected if your doctor certifies you as being terminally ill. And that's your money to spend any way that you like. Uh, met, helping to pay medical bills, experimental treatments, uh, going on one last you know, big vacation with the family. Again, your money to spend as you choose. And then the second no-cost rider is confined care. Um, this one, if they're confined to a nursing home, they can, they can receive a fixed monthly benefit equal to 5% of the face amount. So if they had a $10,000 policy, they're confined to a nursing home, they can receive $500 a month through this benefit. And the way that works out is every time we make a monthly payment, it reduces the remaining death benefit. So your $10,000 policy goes from 10,000 to 9,500 to 9,000 and so on. Essentially, one of two things is gonna happen at that point. Uh, if, they, if you live long enough, the full death benefit will be paid out through those installments. If you pass away before the full amounts, paid out, whatever the remaining balance is, that would be paid as a lump sum to your beneficiary. All right, now I get to move on to something that's that's always really exciting for me to talk about because this, the addition of our uh, on-screen instant decision for this product ha has really been a game changer for us and for agents writing with us. The website for writing business with American Amicable is www dot insurance application dot com hey darren yes quick question for you so i have a question from jerry here it says uh <clears throat> are the life premiums reduced when the grandchild turns 20 uh comes off the policy yes if they uh, come off the policy because the rider has now terminated then then the dollar or two dollars a month would would stop Okay. And then also I had a question um, on the grandchild rider. That's available for all plans, correct? Yes. Okay. Great deal. So the instant decision process, we'll, we'll go into this a little more uh, depth here, but once you hit the button to transmit the application to us, within seconds, a, a decision is going to pop up on the screen. And one of those is going to be a, a locked in decision that the client has been approved for the plan. And that's the one you'd like to try to get every time, you know, case has been approved is applied for. But unfortunately, that doesn't always work out. Sometimes there is a change of plan. You know, you may be applying for the immediate and then the decision comes back that they're a return of premium. Well, well, we'll advise you of that, but we'll also give you some additional details that can be very helpful to you. And I'll go over that in a moment. In a very, very rare instance, we may advise that a telephone interview is, is needed as part of the application process, which can be completed at point of sale. You'll be advised of the phone number to call um, if one does come up. Right now, it's actually averaging less than 2% of our applications for senior choice result in a phone interview. So you'd have to write quite a few apps with us before you'd see your first one uh, that needs to be done with an interview. And we'll talk about what's available in the product guide to also help you do some pre-qualifying of individuals uh, before you even write an application for senior choice. I've got several examples here of underwriting outcomes that you might see. Um, you know, the one at the top of the screen is that firm decision that I was talking about earlier where the client applied for immediate and they're getting immediate. There's obviously nothing you need to do at that point other than wait to get paid on that case. Some other outcomes, they may be other than it's applied for. So this is the scenario where I'm applying for immediate and we're advising that this client's eligible for return of premium. We will advise you what the issue was, what the concern was. In this case, it was the medication Simbacort. 
Now, I realize some of you on this call may not be familiar, uh, that familiar with final expense. Uh, it may just want to take the easiest course of action, which at this point would just be to say, no, I don't need to provide any additional information. I'll just let this case get issued a return of premium and, and, and you move on. But uh, armed with this information, uh, you might want to take a what we call a challenge on this case. For example, you, if you're familiar with Simbacort, you know it's commonly used for either asthma or COPD. And, and from talking with your client, you may know that they are only taking that for their asthma, which would be an immediate outcome versus COPD, which would be return of premium. By checking the yes box on the screen, you'll be able to type in your explanation. You know, client does not take it for COPD, they take it for asthma. The so what of that? That requires that application to get reviewed by a human, un human being, an underwriter, uh, here at our home office. And what happens is a large percent of the time, it's like 60, 70% of the time, when we get a solid explanation like that, with these challenges, we'll go and issue it with the original plan applied for, as opposed to return a premium. So, and again, new agents, you may not kind of pick up on this concept just yet, but for those of you who've been uh, riding final expense for a while, I think you can see how that can be a, a benefit to you to be able to know what the issue is, because other companies won't advise you of that, and also to challenge the outcome because again, most companies will not let you do that. Whatever the initial outcome is, it's in stone. It cannot be changed. So just kind of a review of what you receive from us and, and what kind of what happens next after you write an application with us. Well, number one, you know what you know what our initial decision is. If you got the outcome that you were looking for, you know, applied for immediate, we say it's approved as immediate. Again, nothing more left to do other than wait to get paid. If it's the outcome is not for the plan applied for, as we looked at a moment ago, you'll know what the medications of concern are. And with that information, you can choose to make other product decisions uh, or, or to challenge the outcome. That would be up to you. Or you could simply, as I said earlier, just let a case like that come in as return of premium. And that is how we would issue it. So. We just present you with information, which then you can choose to make you know, future choices with. There are in the uh, product guide some tools that can help you. If you just simply want to uh, get a sense for what uh, medications might be of concern, there is a, medi uh, a med uh, medication listing inside of there. We, we, we talked about Simbacort. A moment ago when we looked at one of the decisions uh, so it's noted in the guide uh, even if you're not familiar with it that it's for asthma or for COPD and we tell you that if they're taking it for asthma then they should be eligible for the immediate plan and if they're taking it uh, currently taking that uh, medication for COPD then it's a return of premium so again just through your fact finding uh, with the client what medications are you taking a lot of times you can use this guide to help pre-qualify an individual. Uh, to coincide with that, also inside the product guide is the uh, listing of medical conditions that we're concerned about. So in this case, we're looking at kidney failure. <clears throat> if they've been diagnosed with that, then they're a return of premium outcome. So I always say, take a look at that guide you know, if you can pre-qualify someone or maybe even determine that they're not eligible at all, then you save yourself going through the application process. So so that's a senior choice. And I'll, I'll pause if there's any any questions about that application process. Uh, no, no questions on screen. Um, but my, uh, just confirm that the ability to find that guide is going to be within the application. The product guide is available on our uh, company website, and I'll, I'm going to go over here in a moment um, our, 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 our agent portal, the website for agent portal, and, and, and let you know where you can find the product materials, including that product guide. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, in addition to having the senior choice for clients 15 up, 
we have a companion product we call the Family Choice for clients under the age of 50. So we're still talking final expense, so there's going to be a lot of uh, similarities. Uh, this one has a minimum of 10,000 as opposed to a minimum of 2,500. That's one of the differences. And there are only two different uh, death benefit death benefit plans they can qualify for based upon medical. The immediate, which goes up to 35,000, and the return of premium, which goes up to 20. Now, again, it's very similar. Uh, and, and for me, the best use of the family choice is really for situations where you have, uh, you're, you're selling to one spouse who may be age 53, and they have a, a spouse that's 48. You know, so and a lot of companies don't have an under 50 option, whereby we do. So to me, to me, that's that's a great fit uh, for the family choice. Uh, several riders here. I'm not, I'm not going into them in detail uh, here, but there's a children's rider, which essentially functions very similar to the grandchild rider that we talked about earlier, except it covers children, their kids versus their grandkids. It has term insurance element along with the guarantee conversion privilege as well. Accidental death, there's the option to add a spouse term rider to this, and then they waiver a premium for disability. It also includes the two no-cost riders we discussed earlier, the terminal illness and confined care. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, um, the family choice is underwritten differently than senior choice. Um, when you're going through our application process, there's two different products to choose from, senior choice, family choice. If you select family choice, it has its own application with its own set of health questions that pertain to it. So again, it's, it's, it, even though it's all final expense, it's, it is a different product. A couple of differences along those lines is this product does not offer the on-screen decision currently. So in effect, every one of these family choice applications are a, quote, refer to home office outcome, meaning the app will come in, underwriter will make a determination, and then you'll be advised of the outcome. Uh, as part of the different health questions and the different underwriting, um, family choice will delve into stuff like their criminal history, driving record, uh, and whether or not they're currently disabled, which all of which are items we do not even ask about on senior choice but could lead to a decline on family choice. So again, a, a nice option to have because you, you want to be able to offer someone under the age of 50, but I do want to make you aware there are some differences between the two plans. Family choice also has in its uh, product guide a similar medication listing, uh, medical impairment listing, and bill chart. Uh, it's just customized for the family choice product. So. Uh, it'll incorporate all the underwriting differences in those guides. Um, just to point out, um, we do offer a uh, Social Security drafting option, which is absolutely essential uh, writing in this market. One of the application questions on the screen, it will say, do you want this draft to coincide with Social Security? If you say yes, then you'll be presented with the five Social Security funding options, which are the first, third, and the second, third, and fourth Wednesday. And that way we'll sync up the uh, timing of our drafts with their receipt of their Social Security money, which the goal of that obviously is to reduce the number of uh, return drafts due to ins insufficient funds. If you say no, it doesn't need to be timed with Social Security, your options will be the first through the 28th of the month. You can, and you can select any of those. In addition to selling, you know, face to face over the dinner table, we also offer several uh, remote selling options. And and by the way, we're talking final expense today, but these also apply to all of our products uh, that we offer. Um, there's the email for signature, voice signature. And a brand spanking new uh, tech signature, was, which was just introduced about a week, week and a half ago. Um, so I'll take a few extra seconds to talk about it. But essentially, 
Um, if you choose this option, you'll generate one text to the applicant that will contain a security code, a six digit code. That code, the applicant will read back to use the agent and then that armed with that code, you're able to send a second text to that applicant. That text contains a link where they will log in using the last four of social, type in their name as for their signature, and finish signing the case. So it's it's uh, it's real simple and straightforward. Um, I think even my parents could use it, but <laughs> but anyway, uh, so it, we'd have a lot of different options for selling if um, other than over the dinner table. A couple of other just general points as we kind of wind things down here today. Um, we have two main websites, and the second one, uh, insuranceapplication.com, we have talked about uh, this you know, so far today. That's where you would go to write the business. Uh, there's also a, a quoting tool uh, that's available there, and there's a couple of other uh, options there, but those are the two main things that you find on insuranceapplication.com. Now, separate from that, we have the what would I'll, I'll call the regular agent portal, which is found on AmericanAmicable.com. A whole bunch of different stuff here, um, you know, your, your statements, uh, your client list, checking status of policies. And as was asked before, that's where you would go. There's a order supply area. You would go there, select the product, select your state, and it will return all the materials pertaining to the product in question. So if you want to see the Senior Choice product guide, the Senior Choice brochure, Senior Choice uh, supplemental forms, all those are available there. You can order those items from us. We'll send you hard copies or certainly you can just access the PDF and use the digital uh, copies as well. Uh, but a whole bunch of stuff out there on AmericanAmical.com as well. One other plug uh, for just kind of how we operate uh, in general when it comes to underwriting is, is we allow all agents to have direct access uh, to our underwriters, which is uh, becoming less and less a common theme out there in the industry. Uh, we allow agents to participate uh, in the underwriting process as much or as little as you choose. Uh, in addition, or, or specifically one thing that you can do that uh, very few companies allow for is a risk assessment where you can take an actual client that you uh, want to know what our outcome might be, or maybe it's just a hypothetical you know, situation that you that you might run into. Uh, you, there are different ways you can do that. Uh, there's the risk assess at aatx.com email that you see on your screen. If you send an email to that with the particulars that you have, we'll respond back we'll, we'll, with what we think the underwriting outcome will be. Also, um, on that agent portal, AmericanAmical.com, there is a live chat feature, which allows you to communicate to any department in the company. Um, it's another alternative uh, to calling us and, and asking for, for assistance or requesting help. But one of the live chat options is to do a risk assessment. So you can submit them that way as well. You know, it's never a guarantee what our, what we tell you, but it's a, it's a, it would be a good indicator of what our underwriting outcome is ultimately going to be. And in closing, uh, just some uh, various uh, contacts uh, for different departments uh, within the company. As I mentioned, we have the two different websites. Um, if you do happen to call into us, our 800 number, 800-736-7311, um, you can follow the prompts to get to any of our uh, departments. Uh, they also have their own separate email addresses. So calls, email, live chat, you know, several different options of, of communicating with us. All right, so we, we've come to the end of my uh, portion today. Uh, I'll open it up to any remaining questions. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, we had the first question, and then I'm actually reading this one here. Um, so uh, end of life organizer to present with the policy 
commission, policy fees, and are they included in commissions? So typically we don't talk about commissions on this particular year, but I think there's some other things around commission. Uh, so like I said, the end of life organize, organizer to present with the policy. So I'm guessing is that, and Jack, you can let me know if I'm correct here or not, but I think he's asking, is there an organizer that you can present when you give the policy? There is a um, like a fa final planning wishes guide that's uh, one of the uh, sales items that's available on the AmericanAmp.com website under right. under senior choice. So, uh, yes, you can order those from us and we'll send you a supply of those and you can use those um, during your presentation. OK, good deal. So and so policy fee. Um, and are they included in the commission? Yes, uh, the um, the policy fee that we charge, as well as any rider premiums, are all commissionable premium. Okay, good deal. And Jack, I'll get with you on the commission side of it. Uh, shoot your email or something with that in there. Just make sure you get that. Um, is the contact info on the previous page also on your website? It's we can it is available. I mean, there's a separate form called the key contacts listing. It, it's actually um, if you think of a PDF, it's two two pages uh, worth of information. So it's it's got what I had there as well as some other uh, individuals, some key individuals within those departments. So you know, a lot of times you may feel like uh, a particular individual and in, in underwriting is the best person to go to to, to get your answers. So uh, you can pick on that person. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um, some favorites in there. Hey, listen, I have one guy, um, and this may be a little bit different, but I had a guy that I was talking to one time, and I felt like he went above and beyond. Of course, we all feel like we have those people we talk to. And I think it was just relationship because he like he emails me all these updates and things like that and they're personalized. So I'm kind of biased to that guy. I always talk to him. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, you do get a favorite, you know, it's just kind of how it is. I can be someone's favorite sometime, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so that's kind of all I see uh, in here. Or there's all that's in here. Uh, so if there's anything that comes up, uh, definitely let you know if I can't answer it myself. And um Darren, you did a great job again because there's not many questions, so that's always good. All right. Well, I will I will take that as a good thing, and uh, <laughs> and, and thanks again for the opportunity. I look, uh, I always enjoy doing these. All right, good deal. And Jack said, uh, "Good job." Thank you, thank you, Jack. And, and you got a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good deal, guys. So we definitely appreciate you guys attending. Um, again, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, let us know. Um, and we'll get to you guys as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, again, Darren, thank you for uh, presenting all this information. Guys, thank you for attending. And of course, we'll uh, get with you guys and, uh, like I said, again, talk a little bit more about the product. And we'll see you some information so that way you guys can get appointed because I know that's what all you guys are here for. Uh, so we thank you. We thank you for attending. And uh, you guys have a great day and a happy AEP. Thank you, Darren. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir. Bye-bye.